Hello friends, in lecture number 9 we will be solving the same truss which we solved in the previous lecture but that was by the method of joints, by here it is by graphical method. That means we are going to find out the magnitude and nature of forces in each and every member of this truss. So our answer begins from here. So it is the steps are the same as we did in the previous sum with uh, where we followed the graphical method. Here a uh, few dimensions are given 3 meter, 4 meter and 4 meter members and external forces are being shown by red colored marker and the joints of the truss member are written with the orange colored marker A, B, C, D and E. So I have drawn the same truss over here with but in the larger scale. The first step to uh, in the graphical method will be to write down the spaces because it is the space diagram I am writing this space is A, B, C, D, E, F and G I am going the clockwise direction that means I have to write down the space name of the spaces around the member for my, this first member that is DB I am writing space number A for BA space number B A, C, 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 D, D likewise going into clockwise direction we have to draw the space diagram here the scale what I have drawn here is 1 centimeter is equal to 1 meter 4 meter so we have 4 centimeter this is the scale which what we can do on the graph paper but I have shown here to explain you very clearly because in graph paper it would become very complicated so this is the clear this is what where we can get the clear idea now beside this space diagram I have drawn a vector diagram where I have taken a scale of 1 cm is equal to 20 kilo Newton. So let us try and draw the vector diagram from this space diagram. So as we did in the previous sum, I am going from A to B, A, B to C, C to D, E, F, G. I am going in clockwise direction. So when I go from A to B, the only vertical force comes in between is 120 kilo Newton external force. It is going downwards. So I am marking a point this A over here and going downwards how much to 120 kilo newton so 1 centimeter is 20 kilo newton so i can write down 120 divided by 20 and so i can draw 6 centimeter downwards so a to b will be 6 centimeter this came by 120 divided by 20 due to this scale so i got 6 centimeter from a to b in similar way, when we go from B to C, again there will be 60 kilo Newton facing downwards. So we have to do 60 divided by 20. So B to C, 60 by 20, that will be 3 centimeter. So when we go from C to D, there is another force going downwards, 30 kilo Newton. So C to D 30 divided by 20. So it will be 1.5 centimeter. So all these three distances are mentioned over here. That means line A, B, C and D is drawn in the vector diagram. Now we will first of all analyze joint A in the space diagram. Because it is the free end joint we are analyzing it first. Now moving clockwise around this point A, the member first is CG, this member is first and this GB is second member. And so in the vector diagram, from this point C, I am drawing a line parallel to GC or we can say CG, this line. I am drawing this line parallel, this line I have drawn parallel over here, CG, C to G, here C to G, it is drawn. And on the second side, I am drawing a line parallel to GB. That is, this line parallel over here. I have drawn the same line over here. But as we don't know the measurements, I have drawn line at first of all this line towards infinity and then after this line towards infinity. And the intersection of these both is known as point G. This one, between B and C. So that becomes our point G. Now for showing the nature of forces in member CG, here we are going from C to G that means 
if we are going clockwise around point a cg i have to travel from here to here c to g so it is as it is going upwards i am drawing an upwards arrow over here that means i am drawing this arrow near the point which i am analyzing that is a so i have to draw this opposite arrow again explaining going from clockwise from c to g i also travel i have to also travel from c to g in this direction the arrow facing from bottom to top i have to show it towards joint a where which joint i am analyzing so this arrow is drawn over here so nature of forces in this member ac is explained or we can say member cg is explained then after second going from g to b this member g to b so i am traveling from g to b left hand side so again i have to travel from from a towards left hand side so draw an arrow this way so i am drawing over here permanently this way this is the opposite arrow this is the first arrow which we determined so this becomes the nature of the force in the member gb so here as the arrows are facing towards the joint it is compressive as the arrows are facing towards each other and away from the joint it is tensile so these are the nature of force as explained in the previous sums and lectures so after this we have to analyze joint b so now we are at joint b so the members meeting at joint b are this bg going clockwise bg 1 this gf2 this fa3 so these three members are meeting at joint b but this bg is already drawn and this uh, reactions are determined so now in vector diagram from g draw a line parallel to gf from this point g i am drawing a line parallel to gf this line facing upwards why it is facing upwards i'll explain you later but i have to draw this line gf parallel to sorry uh, parallel to this line gf i have to draw a line over here and starting from g and towards upwards now second line i have to draw from f a so i am drawing a line parallel to fa this fa starting from a going this side towards infinity this line was also infinity the intersection of this both should be f so we went upwards so that is the space f or we can say point f determined so now for determining the nature of forces when we are going clockwise from g to f here we have to travel from g to f and so we should be traveling upwards consider a mouse running from g to f it is going upwards so here again i have to draw an arrow upwards towards point b because i am analyzing point b i have to draw an arrow over here and this is the opposing arrow so nature of force over here is determined again from f to a i am traveling from f to a left hand side so i have to draw an arrow over here left hand side and this is the opposing arrow again your nature of the forces are determined here it is compressive here it is tensile so we have completed analyzing joint b and now we are considering joint c or we can say we are analyzing joint c now at joint c the members de and ef are remain to be drawn that means nature of forces of this and this member are still remaining between de and ef these two members so for that we will be analyzing so now in vector diagram i am drawing this line de parallel over here so this line is parallel to line de and i am drawing from point d towards e towards infinity so these both lines are parallel from here to here this line is parallel towards infinity we are not having any dimension then after i am drawing another line from e to f or we can say from f to e as i am not having point e 
right now I don't have this point so I'm drawing from F like this this line parallel to this so these both lines are parallel and there will be the intersection point and we are giving it name as point E so here our vector diagram gets completed but still the nature of forces in member DE and EF are not determined so for doing that I have to travel from D to E that means from D towards E I am going upwards so here I am going upwards and drawing an upward zero towards point C as I am analyzing joint C I have to draw first arrow towards C and opposing arrow towards opposite side in similar way I have to travel from E to F going clockwise D to E and then E to F so I am traveling from here to here that is going upwards so I am drawing an upward zero near point C and opposing arrow towards this side so now nature of forces are determined this becomes compressive this becomes tensile so nature of forces in all the members are determined but still the only thing remaining is magnitude now to de determine the magnitude we can measure the length of each and every member over here suppose I am measuring this member BG it is 8 centimeter and so I have written it here 8 centimeter but according to scale 1 centimeter is equal to 20 kN so 8 centimeter is equal to 8 into 20 that will be 8 into 20 160 so BG or we can say GB this member is having 160 kN in similar way we can determine for each and every member the magnitude of forces the nature of force is already being known but the only thing remaining is magnitude and that we can calculate by using this scale and the measurement of this vector diagram so in this way the graphical method for the analysis of a simple truss gets completed but still we will be solving uh, some few more examples on analysis by methods of joint so keep watching, do like and subscribe.